Welcome once more, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of Ask Oki. Today, it's all about suits. In a prior segment, we reviewed the foundation of building a wardrobe. And we talked about suits, we talked about sport jackets, trousers, casual dress, and so on and so forth. However, in the same video, we suggested that we might start this exercise by focusing on suits. Now, let's talk about suits. In my opinion, every man, every man, and that means every man, should own at least one decent suit or two. Now, for those of you who require suits for work or business or even leisure, you might opt for a much broader suit wardrobe. However, in an environment which is tending more and more towards sort of a casual, elegant dress, shall we say, uh, sport coats, of course, are more prevalent. Nevertheless, I still believe there is nothing more sophisticated than a suit, a complete two-piece suit, that is. And so without further ado, we're going to go into suits. We're going to go through all these suits here, uh, pick them out in a certain order. We're going to talk about each of them and how to go about building the foundation of your wardrobe. Now, do bear in mind that I say foundation. And so we're going to be focusing solely on what I consider foundational suits. Foundational suits. That's the operative word. And so if you look to my right, you're going to see blues and grays. Different shades of grays. And that is purely by intention. I haven't included any other colors or patterns, wild patterns. We're just keeping it very, very basic. In other words, if you were to put together a functional, versatile wardrobe, how should one approach it? And so let's get right into it. Starting here is a dinner suit. Or a tuxedo. Some would call it a tuxedo. I prefer the term dinner suit. Every man needs a well-tailored tuxedo. You may not use it frequently, but you will need it at least once a year or several times a year. And at that time when you need it, it has to be absolutely on point. So every man, every man needs at least one tuxedo or dinner suit. Um, there is the old adage that the most elegant garment that makes a man his most handsome is a tuxedo. It's a monochromatic garment. It's dark. You wear it with a white shirt, a dark bow tie, and a cummerbund or a waistcoat. Very simple, black shoes, monochromatic, yet it is considered the most elegant piece of dress a gentleman could wear. So let's get right into it. What do I have on here? I have on a dinner suit. I'll lay it down here. It is a single breasted, one button, as it should be. Tuxedos should come with only one button and a pick lapel, of course. Um, none of that rental stuff with two buttons and three buttons. The tuxedo comes with a single button. Now, one other thing to note, it's a formal garment. And so here, I've had this made using a link as opposed to a button which increases the formality of the garment. It has a link which holds the two panels together. Of course, the facing on the lapel is gross grain or silk, whatever you choose. Some people decide to use some other flamboyant, uh, more flamboyant fabric, but it should be some kind of uh, a formal uh, fabric on the lapel. As far as the trousers go, it comes with a stripe down the middle of the leg. And again, that denotes it as a formal garment, a black stripe or braid down the middle of the trouser, matching the facing on the lapel. Okay, it's a very simple garment, a closer look. The back. Now let's talk about the fabric itself. Typically, tuxedos or dinner suits are made traditionally in barathea, which is a type of wool. It's a woven wool, very tightly woven. Um, 
and it's as old as they get, a very classic wool. They would typically come in black, which is the traditional color for a tuxedo. However, more recently, um, midnight tends to be a more contemporary color, and for good reason. Midnight tends to sort of absorb light in dark, uh, in, uh, um, under artificial light, as opposed to black. Um, the wrong kind of black would throw off a brown shade under artificial light, and most events, most dinner events, of course, occur at night. And so midnight blue tends to, in fact, be slightly darker or show darker under artificial lighting than actual black. And so what I have here is a midnight blue mohair dinner suit. Um, it's about 10 ounces mohair by Domu. Uh, it's tonic for those of you who are uh, cloth nerds. Uh, this is made by Tonic, uh, made from Tonic 2000. It's about 10, 11 ounce mohair. Mohair wool mix, of course, uh, because of course mohair is so brittle, brittle, it needs to be blended with wool uh, to make it functional. And so this is about 60% mohair, 40% wool, or the other way around, maybe 60% wool, 40% mohair. However, it's a mohair suit, and that is my go to dinner suit. Um, can pretty much be worn all, se all seasons uh, with a top coat in the winter, of course. Uh, it's not heavy enough to wear by itself um, in the colder season. So that's it. That's our dinner suit. A simple, uh, elegant garment, single breasted, one button, uh, gross grain face lapels. The trousers are cut with a braid, and of course, it comes with a vest. Comes with a vest. You have the choice of either wearing it with a vest, in my case, a double-breasted vest, or a cummerbund. Uh, others prefer a cummerbund, but I, I consider cummerbunds to be somewhat fuddy-duddy. And so I prefer a very low-cut vest worn under it. So that's it for the dinner suit. We move on to uh, what I would call more foundational business or formal suits. And we start with the most basic of them all, which is your navy hopsack suit. This is as classic as it gets. It's as classic as it gets. It's a navy hopsack. It's about 13 ounces. It's a simple two-button business suit. Nothing flamboyant about it. I've had this made with a third piece with a waistcoat, which I very seldom wear. Uh, but I just have it there, just in case I need to dress it up a little bit more. But there you have it. It's a very, very simple dark, a very rich dark blue in, um, in a hop sack. In a hop sack fabric, it's about 13 ounces. Uh, this, if I recall, is uh, H Lesser, 13 ounces. I think the name of the bunch, it's number 303, if I recall cor correctly. But it's, uh, this is a very sturdy English wool, drapes really well, drapes fantastically, and very sturdy, um, very robust, uh, and something that will last you probably uh, many, many, many years, and, uh, and uh, with you getting a lot of use out of it. So again, uh, your navy suit is a staple. Um, it's something that could even double for a dinner suit. If you don't have a budget for one, you could wear this uh, for events at night, uh, most men do. Uh, and for business during the day. So again, that's your number one basic suit. The second, and before I get there, the way I've arranged this, I've arranged them in a certain order. We have the dinner suit, of course, and these are what I call your foundational suits. Now, the way I've arranged them, I have the heavier worsted suits all the way to the left. So these are both 13 ounce suits, 13 ounce, 13 ounce, which is sort of bordering on the heavier side, about three season suits. Um, and next to them, I have more what I would call tropical suits or summer suits, this and this, and I'll explain when I get to each of them. These are summer suits, again, in blue or navy-ish. And same with the grays. These are 13 ounce suits, Sort of heavier fabrics, uh, you get probably get three seasons out of this for those of you in the Western Hemisphere. 
And then here we have two summer fabrics, an open weave and a fresco. Well, similar, this is Crisper by Holland and Cherry, and I'll get to it. So I've explained the order in which I've arranged this, and we've talked about the first suit. Now let's get to the second suit. Now, what do we have here? What we have here is a double-breasted suit in herringbone. It's a double-breasted, bluish herringbone fabric. It's got very, very slight herringbones, not very, very visible or discernible from afar. Uh, but when you come very close, you can see the, the, the very fine herringbone weave. Um, just a very classic, very, very classic fabric. Again, 13 ounces by Lesser. I believe this is the same bunch, Lesser 303. Um, and I've had this made as a double-breasted suit, uh, just to offer some variation uh, in instances where you want to stay business, but you want to add a little bit of fun to it. Uh, and you, and, and situation where your traditional navy suit might appear a bit too stuffy. Um, you can go for a double-breasted suit like this. It still maintains its sort of formality, yet it's a bit more playful. It's a bit more casual. It's a bit more playful. It's a bit more stylish. And so that's what we have here. I've had it made in a 6x2 format. Very simple. No frills. Um, with, again, our typical Asco key trousers which you can see from here, a signature buckle in the back, uh, cut very full, of course. Closer look. Cut very full with two inch cuffs. And that's it. It's a very simple garment, one elegantly with a white shirt or a light blue shirt and a very, uh, uh, very uh, conservative tie. Uh, it takes you through any situation. So that's that. Now, as far as the blues go, we're going to go more into the tropical suits, or sort of what I would call the summer suits. Here we have an open weave suit made from Smith Woolens Fin Marisco, which is sort of, sort of fresco per se, but it's an open weave. Slightly a bit tighter than your typical frescoes, but it's still an open weave and it breeds exceedingly well and something one can wear uh, during the summer. Uh, just to elaborate, I'll, I'll open this up a little bit, again with our Asco key trousers. And if I hold this up, you can almost see through it. You can almost see through it, it's unlined. So, this is a summer suit. It's a lightweight fabric. Well, not quite light. It's about 13 ounces, um, just to ensure the drape. However, it's, it's woven quite openly, and it's something you, might, it's something you want to wear in the, uh, in the summer months or when it starts to get a bit warm. So that would be my third suit in the blue um, category, or navy stroke blue category. I've had this made as sort of a casual suit with patch pockets. Patch pockets and, of course, lapped seams. For those of you who are into tailoring, if you look a bit closer, you can see that the seams are lapped. What, I, what do I mean by lapped? Which means that the stitches, they're double stitched, which basically denotes this as a casual garment. Uh, typically, more formal garments are cleaner. They have a single stitch. However, if you want to sort of make a garment or coat more casual, uh, you can use lap seams, which is sort of this double stitching you see here on the lapel. You can also see the double stitching on the pockets and so on. And so this is certainly a casual suit, um, something I wouldn't necessarily wear to a very serious business meeting, but uh, something I would wear to the office on uh, a breezy casual summer day. Um, or certainly on a Friday, um, if, you, uh, if you have a casual Friday policy. So that's that. That's our first blue summer suit. The next summer suit is a, is a true tropical wool. It's a true tropical wool. Just a very, very 
fine nine ounce, eight, nine ounce tropical wool cloth, 100% wool. And this is by Lesser, I believe, as well. Uh, this is H. Lesser Tropical. It was cut from H. Lesser Tropical. It's about nine ounces, very, very light, almost feather light. Actually, I have on the same suit in a different color, same fabric in a different color. Uh, very, very light, um, but drapes exceedingly well. Uh, something which Lesser is known for. Uh, the cloth is light, but it punches way above its weight when it comes to drape. Again, I've had it made online because it's a summer suit. It's completely online for ventilation. It's not as open weave as you can see. It's not as open weave as the Finmerisco, but it's still light and it's still very breathable. So it's a very light garment. The construction is very light. This is sort of a Neapolitan construction. So the canvas is very, very light. Um, it's really no structure to the coat itself. So that allows you to wear it when it gets really warm without overheating. And once again, the trousers are classic Askoki trousers, pleated trousers made in the traditional format for, um, for our blue suits. And we're gonna move on to the grays. So, with the grays, where do we start? We start with a shark skin. This is a medium gray shark skin suit. Now, some would opt for charcoal gray as the first gray suit, and they would be right. Uh, charcoal gray, you know, sort of is a very, very formal color, the equivalent or the, the gray equivalent of a navy. Uh, however, I find it to, a bit, to be rather somber. I find charcoals to be very, very somber, uh, almost black, which uh, in my view uh, comes across as very funereal, not funeral, uh, very funereal. Um, and so I like mid gray because uh, it has um, white yarns in it. It has sort of very, very prominent white yarns in it which allows, uh, which lends it to more versatility. You can combine it with more colors. It just takes more colors. Uh, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. And so for my, um, what I would call mid-weight gray suit, I went for a mid, uh, or mid-weight gray suit. I went for a mid-weight shark skin. Uh, again, this is by Lesser, H. Lesser, from the same bunch, I believe 303. Just a beautiful fabric. Uh, it's called a shark skin, or some would call it a pick and pick. Um, but it's beautiful. If you look at it, just a closer look at it. If you zoom in, you can see the weave. It's quite distinct when you come very close. But from afar, of course, it looks like a, a traditional uh, gray suit. So that's it. Again, double-breasted, nothing fancy, uh, cut in the same format as one of the other double breasteds there. Um, nice size, but tame lapel, uh, nothing too wi wild. Uh, we talked about uh, 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 gorges in our last video. Again, a very classic gorge, not too high, not too low, uh, just a good balance to the coat overall. Traditional six by two, something you could wear uh, literally anywhere. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful number. So that's it, that's our heavyweight, our first heavyweight, or sort of mid-weight 13 ounce gray suit. Now, the next 13 ounce gray suit is something a little bit more fun. A little bit more fun, uh, because life is too short, of course, to be wearing uh, just boring, plain boring gray suit. So what we have here is sort of, it's a hound's tooth. It's a hound's tooth, a micro hound's tooth. Uh, from afar, it looks like a light gray. From a distance, it looks like a light gray. But on closer inspection, you can see it's, a, it's essentially a cream base with black hound's tooth patterns. Very, very small hounds. So some would call it puppy tooth. Um, again, it's a double-breasted suit caught in the same, much in the same fashion as the other. Uh, this is uh, very, very proper for, well, all but the most somber business meetings. Again, cut with our traditional Askoki trousers. Cut very full. 
full cut wide leg to uh, two inch uh, two inch uh, cuffs and the jacket is very very classic very classic jacket fully lined um, just to have a little bit of fun here I've used uh, sort of a burgundy lining uh, but of course you could use whatever color lining you wish to but it's a very uh, beautiful 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 cloth um, it's makes a statement without screaming um, it's it's just a very beautiful playful cloth uh, that still can be very quietened down or can be dressed somberly depending of course on how you accessorize it uh, a, a suit like this i would typically wear with a plain white shirt just a plain white shirt and a black knit tie very very rarely or very seldom do i wear anything else with this um, usually a clean crisp white shirt and a black knit tie and black pair of shoes and that's it and then the fabric basically does the rest uh, and so that's it that's our next uh, 13 ounce number or mid-weight gray suit now we get to the summer suits for the summer suits i have two specimen here the first is a true fresco it's a true fresco very dry hand to it open weave high twist this is i believe by harrison's of edinburgh uh, from uh, what book is it again um, i don't recall off the top of my head but again it's an open weave it's a summer suit so you can see from here it is completely unlined for ventilation. Online for ventilation. And when I hold it up, you can literally see through it. And so this is a real open weave. This is a true open weave, a high twist fabric uh, made by Harrison's of Edinburgh. And uh, I've had this made into a very conventional two button suit, just a simple conventional two button suit. Um, something you can wear in the summer. Again, it's about a medium, medium to charcoal gray, slightly darker than this, but not quite charcoal. So, which I find again, it's got those white yarns in it, um, which uh, allow you again uh, to mix this uh, or to blend this or to accessorize it with a broader range of accessories, including shirts, ties, uh, and so on and so forth. So, that is our penultimate suit. And then the final suit, one of my favorites, by the way, is a dove gray summer suit. Just a beautiful thing. Just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I believe this is by, um, this is by Holland and Sherry. This is Chris Bear by Holland and Sherry, which is their interpretation of, uh, of a high twist. I've had it made in a three-piece. Again, I very seldom wear the, the waistcoat, uh, but when the occasion calls for it, uh, I step up and I put on the waistcoat. But this is a typical summer suit. This I haven't made online. It's completely lined, but it's still light and breathes quite well. So again, it's about 10 ounces. It drapes quite well. It doesn't have the rough hand of other high twists which tend to be a bit rough, and uh, some find it a bit uncomfortable, especially with the trousers. Uh, when the trousers are online, they tend to be quite scratchy on the leg, and some find that very uncomfortable or displeasing. But with Crispair, the good thing about Crispair is it just a very, very, has a very fine hand to it, and so it doesn't have that scratchiness of your conventional uh, fresco or high twist in this case. So that's it. Um, it's a dove gray. Uh, this is a real summer suit. Um, you could only wear something like this in the summer. Uh, many wear this to summer weddings, uh, but of course you could wear it to the office on a summer day, uh, especially on a Friday or something like that. Uh, I've had it made in a conventional two-button. Uh, this is again a Neapolitan uh, cut. Um, I'll put this down for a second. 
It's a Neapolitan card, so a little bit sort of, uh, it has all the features and idios idiosyncrasies of a Neap Neapolitan coat. Um, but that said, it's a, just a very simple, simple, elegant garment. Um, and uh, you could dress it up, you could dress it down, uh, you could wear this with a polo beneath, uh, with a dark blue polo, with a white polo, or, um, or um, you know, or a t-shirt. Uh, set. Of course, you could dress it up with a white shirt, a uh, linen shirt in the summer, or a light blue, sky blue linen shirt, and just access accessorize it um, as you wish. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful number. Uh, very versatile in the summer. So that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this presentation. Now, do bear in mind, I have said foundational. I used the word foundational at the beginning of the video because I believe these are the core suits that comprise a suit wardrobe, the foundation of a suit wardrobe. Now, one of the mistakes people make is, well, I have a navy suit, so I'm going to go get a brown one, and then a yellow one, and then a green one, and then the one with bold checks, and so on and so forth. Uh, because there's this idea that having different colors and, and patterns and so on and so forth uh, makes your wardrobe more versatile. Nothing could be further from the truth. And so I often recommend uh, to those who seek my opinion, my view on this, is you, you start with the staples and ensure that within those staples, you have both seasons covered. You start with the staple colors, which means your blues and your grays. And you ensure that within those staple colors, you have both seasons, both winter or sort of fall, the cooler seasons and the summer seasons covered. Once you have those covered, then of course you may do as you wish. You could sort of expand your wardrobe in either direction you could go for color, you could go for patterns, you could go for pinstripes, chalk stripes, window panes, Prince of Wales, whatever floats your boat. Uh, the choices are just uh, plentiful. However, you will notice that there, is, there are no pattern suits here. There, these are all solids. And um, rather than use patterns, what we've used is texture. We've used texture to sort of provide some visual interest um, to the suits. So that's about it. Um, it's a foundation, and once you have these covered, um, then of course you could broaden out in either direction uh, you wish, either patterns or colors, um, or even completely casual suits like tweed suits, and then of course you've got linen suits um, for the summer. However, we'll leave that for another day. We do have, of course, linen suits and tweed suits that we'd like to talk about later, but for the purposes of this uh, video, which is aimed at the foundation, building the foundation of your suit wardrobe. Uh, we're keeping it very, very basic. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once more for joining us. And uh, we shall see you on the next episode of Ask Oki. And do not forget, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. And follow us on, on Instagram at Ask Oki IG. That is Askoki IG. Um, please also visit our portal at www.askoki.com. Uh, sign up for an account and familiarize yourself with the portal. And uh, try out our Genie wardrobe tool. Uh, it is quite, a, quite a, a thing to behold. So that's about it for today. And I will see you on the next episode. Goodbye.